and chat with Kay. It's great to be on this morning. Thank you for joining me. Oh, Carol's telling me she loves the pink. Yeah, when it's kind of a dreary day outside, I like putting bright colors on. Although you'll notice I still have the gray on underneath. And Kay has shared. Oh, thank you. You know, the giveaway this time around is going to be the gray granite ribbon. I don't believe that's carrying over. So I'll give away two yards of the gray granite ribbon along with one of each of these beautiful sympathy cards. We'll do that drawing probably on Thursday. Yes, on Thursday. So that's coming up. I think I'm crooked. I'm going to see if I can fix this here. I don't know. We'll see. Well, I have some cards I can share with you, so I will go ahead and start doing that. Oh, I don't know. Maybe it was my iPad that was crooked. That looks a little better. All right, so let's share some cards that I got in the mail. I'm going to grab these out. Oh, I have a lot here. More than I thought. Every time I get a card in the mail, after I admire it for a while, I throw it into this little bucket here next to my desk so that I remember to share it on our Facebook Lives. So the first one that really bought, brought a big smile to my face was from one of my customers, Marty Grimm. She is just an amazing crafter. You guys are going to get such a kick out of this because it relates to COVID. And she's got this little gal sitting on a little, well, kind of a big pile of toilet paper. Um, and I'm not sure who makes the image. She did use the stitch rectangles as her cutout on the front of the card and also in the center of the card. And then I think she just did a computer printout. So Marty, thank you so much for this really cute card. So I'll share it now. It's so cute, isn't it? looks like she colored with blends. She did some great little details too. She added little tiny specks of Wink of Stella into the little dots on the bows or on the hair bow. So cute. So Marty, you are a sweetheart. Always one of my big fans here at Stamping to Share. So I really appreciate that. Such a cute card. Thank you. And then I got a card from another customer of mine. This is from Lynn Washer, and I just want to share it. It, it, was, one, it was one of Shelly uh, Gardner's, Gardner's um, kind of special paper pumpkin kits. So some of you may recognize this. Really cute. Of course, you know Shelly. She's so elegant and vintage all at the same time. So I really appreciate that Lynn shared this with me. Thank you so much, Lynn. You're just a sweetheart. And she sent me a thank you card to, because I sent her a thank you. And she, so she was sending me a thank you for the thank you. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Oh, goodness. And then I have another card. This one is from a Downline member, and I believe it is called an Impossible Card. Um, Obviously so impossible that I'll probably never make one, but I have down, very, very talented downline members that I surround myself with. So I'm going to share it with you, and it uses the new Ornate Garden Suite, which you guys are available, that is available as an early order for our customers. So I'm going to show it to you. In fact, I think I need to stand up to make sure this is getting into the camera well. So this is what it looks like. This is from my downline member, Karen Mack. She lives here in Minnesota. And um, there's a lot of light airiness to this card. I'm going to tilt it up a little bit. So you can, here's what it looks like flat when it's in the envelope. Oh, goodness. I don't think it's on the, is it on the screen? Well, I have to wait a second for my iPad to catch up. There we go. So that's what it looks like when it's all flat. And then when you take it out of the envelope, this little section here pops up and I just want you to see how she how she did all this layering on the sides of the card so she's she fussy cut these flowers and then layered them up so really really beautiful and then I love the way you know did you guys know the one inch circle punch is retiring isn't that a shame yes I think that's a shame I'm just gonna come right out and say it <laughs> I'm glad I have three of them because I use them all the time but she has the one inch circle punch here with sending hugs layered over the timeless 
uh, to or the timeless label punch. And then the sentiment is on the back of the card. So it looks like this. So anyway, she didn't even put her name on it because she wanted me to be able to use it. I don't know. How can I give away something this pretty? I just might have to keep it in my office for a long time to come. So thank you so much, Karen Mack. You're quite a talent. We're very lucky to have you in our Stamping to Share uh, Creative Crafters Downline group. Then I have another card from Judy Heyman. She's another member of my downline group, and she is in our rack group. So we have a birthday slash rack group that's part of our creative crafters group. So every once in a while I'll get a card from someone in the group and I love it. She always puts this little note in her cards and it says, it is my habit to not sign my handmade cards to enable the recipient the option of regifting the card if they so desire. And then she signs it Judy Heyman. So very sweet. So I'm going to show you that card. So that's kind of a fun fold card. So I'm going to stand up so you can see that really well too. So that looks like this. And I believe she's using the real red. It's either the real red or the cherry cobbler designer series paper in the background. And then you open it up and it's one of those fun folds that works like this. Isn't that cute? And then it goes back together like this. So a really nice, interesting fold card from, from my downline member, Judy Heyman. And that's just so sweet. I love it. So thank you so much, Judy. You're just a treasure. All right. So let me move these out of the way for a moment. Then I want to share with you some other cards. So let me see here. I think what I'm going to do is flip the camera down. Because these other cards all relate to a stamp set that Stampin' Up! is retiring called Flourishing Phrases. That's the stamp set I use to make this masculine sympathy card. Then I also use the Country Club Designer Series paper. So I'm just going to put the camera down and we'll just get started. And you guys are going to love this. So let me bring this in nice and close and then we'll get going making this card. Well, good morning. Looks like we have a lot on today. Thank you so much. You guys must be interested in learning how to make this card. So let me get down to some of the basics that we're using today. Um, one of the big things that we're using today is this Country Club Designer Series paper. And, and you know, even if you're not a golfer, there's some really nice pieces to this paper set. So just ignore the golf side if you're not a golfer or you don't know a single person who golfs and you would never send a card to a golfer. Ignore that. Flip it over. There's some nice uh, pieces here to go watercolor. They're not all golf related. But what I've done is I've cut this paper into thirds and then into fourths. So you basically have 12 four by three images. But the other side of this paper, I just want to show it to you. Look at this. Look at all these cool um, plaids and argyles. And it's just a lovely, lovely set of paper. This is the one I'm using for the sympathy card today. You know, I really wasn't impressed with this particular side anyway, even though I am a golfer. It was just too busy for me. So um, I liked, I love this side. Then I like this side. I'm not a big fan of the, of the, I just think this is too busy. But I love, I love this side. So I mean, even, even those of us, you know, dyed in the wool Stampin' Up! fans, we don't have to like everything that Stampin' Up! puts out. But we usually like at least half of it. So with this particular designer series paper, um, yes, it's great. This other side is great. So this will be retiring here in a few, uh, a couple of weeks here. And so I'm going to show you a card that you can make with some of these papers and you're going to love it. So this is the card we're going to make. And just to point out, here is the paper we're using. This is what the inside panel looks like. And I even decorated the envelope today, which is really going above and beyond my normal. And I'll give you a couple of tips with that too, because when I do these envelopes, a silicone mat is absolutely essential. Um, before I get on to the flourishing, flourishing phrases set, I want to show you some mixed results that I had, as in stuff I didn't think turned out very well. <laughs> I had some mixed results coloring this uh, 
designer series paper that I cut three by four. So what I did, well, first of all, I'll show you the one that absolutely did not turn out. And that is this one. The paper is just too absorbent to use with aqua pens. So I was using the Stampin' Up! Aqua Painter with reinkers, and it just, it just got all curled up. So you probably can't even really tell this because the video makes it look better than it really is, but it's, it's not good. It's very curled up from the water and I don't know, I would just, I, it's just the paper absorbs too quickly to get a nice image when you're using the aqua painter. So don't waste your time trying to color it with an aqua painter. It's just not that great. Then the second thing I did was I colored with the watercolor pencils. I used the assortment number two and I colored both of these. Both of these actually look like this initially because this is colored without uh, using the blender pen. Stampin' Up! sells sets of blender pens that work really nice with the watercolor pencils. So this is an example of coloring with the watercolor pencils and then just leaving it like that, not doing any blending with your blending pen or with the aqua painters, just leaving it. And I thought that turned out really well. I figure that that's very usable and so I, I will probably use that on a future card. So I'm going to set that aside. Then I took that same that same design using all the same colors and it, and then I used my blender pen over everything. So may I remind you, it looked like this initially. Then I took my blender pen to blend it all out and I didn't like the results. I mean, I thought it just made everything look kind of washed out, which is fine. I mean, if that's the look you're going for, but I wasn't real impressed. So I liked using the watercolor pencils without anything just straight on watercolor pencils i thought i thought that looked pretty good but the most success that i had the most incredible success i had was with just my stampin blends and i've told you guys a million times how much i love stampin blends this just emphasizes the fact that you don't even have to have fabulous fabulous papers to work with because not that the designer series paper isn't fabulous, but I just felt like this paper wasn't really conducive to doing a lot of uh, intense coloring on, but yet the blends worked beautifully with this paper. So I will, I actually did one in advance because it is a little time consuming to um, put that all together. Well, I think I did it in advance, yes. So I did one in advance. Look at how pretty that is. I did one in advance and then I'm going to do one on camera for you because like I mentioned it is kind of time consuming so we're not going to, we're just going to do one on camera so you can see how to use these colors. But the other thing that I'm using with this set is something soon to be retired and it's something I've used quite a bit. Stampin' Up! has had it in their catalog for some time. This is the Flourish Flourishing Phrases stamp set. At one point it came out as a bundle with the Flourish Thinlets got them all packed away here. I'll just show you a few a few things you can do here with the ah, the big one. This is the one I wanted. That's really pretty. And it, these aren't made to fit exactly over the top. Obviously they don't. So it was sold kind of as companion dies to go with this stamp set for accenting. So I went to my little stash of cards and I found some beautiful cards that I could share with you that use the Flourish Thinlet dies along with the Flourishing Phrases stamp set. So I'm gonna give these, give you guys a look at these. So this is from my downline member, Mary Kylie, and she made this beautiful sympathy card. Just a, just a sweet little bit of pearls there accenting it. And, and that one of the flowers is just really open and pretty and I love it, it really, this is just really gorgeous. So that's from my downline member, Mary Kylie. Then, this one didn't have a name with it. Once in a while, you'll get a swap that doesn't have a name. So this was a swap. And I really like how this one is, too, because it's got the with sympathy down here, and then it's got some of those cutouts. And then the oval was cut out, and then there was another layered oval over the top of that. And then the sentiment is stamped here. So think of this. This could be one of those inside-out cards where you, where you cut the 
front of the card through and then when you open it up the sentiment is on the inside but also shows through to the outside if you know what I mean so that's probably how I would remake this card if I were going to do a remake but again I thought it was so pretty I had to share with you and, I, and I'm sad I can't give credit to whoever made this card but it's, it's really a, a stellar card then I have a card from my downline member Mary Alice Bellis she is quite the stamper and it is very beautiful. And so this is um, this was copper embossed. And then again, she has one of the cutouts here, and then one of the border cutouts. And then here she just took uh, God wanted to brighten up the world, and she just punched that out, layered it over the top of the border. She's got some kind of a gold foil from some past designer series paper, and then on the inside, so he made you, and then she's got the little. Uh, the little flourish from the stamp set stamped on the inside which I think is just just one of my favorite cards ever just beautiful and then she wrote me a nice note on the back so then I got to you know reimagine all of that specialness all over again so this was a card I had gotten quite a while ago but I dug it out so I could share it with you today and then this is a card I made sometime in the past let me see if I dated it I did so back in 2017 I made this card and again, it just it's a very simple card. It's just got a couple of the flourishes stamped. It's got the leaves here, the, the pretty flower right here. And then again, it says, with sympathy. And then it's got a little bow. So very simple, quick and easy sympathy card. I probably did a video on that. I can't even remember. All right, so let us go now to creating the card we're going to make today. Now that you've, now that you've been... Uh, reminded of how awesome the flourishing phrases stamp set and coordinating dies are so we're gonna start I'm gonna start with our card bases as I always do and this is thick whisper white paper so this is nice and sturdy paper I've cut it landscape style it's four and a quarter by 11 inches so it looks like this then I scored it at five and a half down the middle and folded it in half and that's what that looks like to start off with. So we've got two of those. Then we're going to go ahead and we're going to do the inside and just get that panel all done. So what I have here are two pieces of this basic gray uh, designer series paper. I've cut this at one half inch by five and a quarter. And we're going to be putting that on the inside panel of our card. I happen to have some snail really handy. You could use multi-purpose liquid glue. It's whatever you want, whatever adhesive you like to use. And you're just going to center this in here down at the bottom so that the bottom and the right sides are about even. And we're going to do that on this other card too, right on the inside. So again, I'm just going to take some snail. And you know, I have to tell you, my customers have been a little worried about snail being discontinued. Now don't worry. Stampin' Up! You Know is going to come out with something wonderful. So don't worry about it, but if you really want to, you can get snail refill. I believe it's back ordered at the moment, but they might come in with another shipment. Um, but yeah, I've had a lot of concern about that in my customer base. Then what we're going to do is we're going to take the basic gray ink pad, which I have ready to go, and we're going to stamp our inside sentiment. And again, get that done and out of the way. And this says, praying that your heart will be lifted by the many loving thoughts that surround you today. Just a really nice sympathy card. Wow. That, this, isn't it so much fun to stamp and just have such a nice image? It's just a little thrill every single time. I don't know. It's what keeps me going. You know, I've been stamping for 20 years. I haven't been a demonstrator for 20 years, but I have been a stamper for 20 years, and I still find just... A little thrill every single time I do it. It's one of the true blessings of having a creative hobby. And a, and a true blessing this time. You know, this, this era where we can, you know, let our creativity go. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is focus on how to color this image. So, as I mentioned, I did cut all of those images down to... You'll notice this is a little bigger. I cut it down to three by four, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim off one of those edges just a little bit. So the image we're actually going to be working with here is three by three and three fourths. So initially I cut them all three by four just because it's fast and easy. 
Then, because I wanted to shorten this up just a tad for this particular design on this card, I cut it three by three and three fourths. Now we're gonna go ahead and try to replicate this. So, what do we need and what order do we do it in? What we need is the dark crumb cake. Now, before, before you um, worry too much about all of those blends on the retiring list, just remember that you don't have to worry about that because Stampin' Up! is still going to sell them. I've been selling a lot of blends and it's not so much it's not so much the combo packs that I'm selling right now. What it is, is people are looking through their collection of blends and they're saying to themselves, wow, I've got, I got the dark mossy meadow, but I never ordered the, the light mossy meadow. So if you have broken combos, in other words, you have a light rich razzleberry, but you don't have the dark rich razzleberry, go through your blends figure out which of the combo parts that you don't have and get that ordered before before you can't because Stampin' Up! is going to discontinue those singles. All right? So you, if you have singles that you want to complete your combo pack, get those now because in the future, starting June 3rd, you will only be able to buy combo packs. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going, to, so the other two colors that we're using, that was dark crumb cake. Then we're going to use the combo pack of old olive and the combo pack of balmy blue. And I'm going to take the thin side of the old olive and we're going to go in here and we're just going to etch a little bit onto these trees right where you see the darkest of the marks. So we're just gonna do that. And I do apologize in advance because this is gonna take a little bit of time and I know that you just want it done instantly. But if I'm going to show you how to color something, I actually have to show you. And yes, yes, coloring is not something that can be done super, super quickly. So as you can see, I am just accenting some of those dark areas not all of them but a lot of them so i'm doing that all first with my dark old olive stamp and blend and you'll notice that most of the accent is on the left side of the tree and that is because that's where the hash marks are. So you always kind of know where to color based on the hash marks. All right, so those trees are now done. I'm gonna hold it up so you can see. They're done with this particular color. Then I'm gonna come in here and there's a little bush down here. I'm just gonna add uh, just a few little accents in this dark old olive. And then I'm going to come in here where the grass is. And again, just a few old olive accents up here at the top of the hill where the shadow of the tree would be. And again, I'm just following the accent marks. All right, then I'm going to put this away because we're done with it. Then go ahead and take your light old olive. And I'm going to use the brush end this time. And this won't take long. Because then you don't have to worry about really anything. You just are filling in the rest of the tree. And it sort of seems like as you're doing it, you, there's not a lot of blending going on because this paper is not super conducive for that. Now, Whisper White would work really well, but you have to remember we're working with designer series paper, which is a little thinner. Um, maybe not necessarily designed for a lot of coloring activity. But... It does blend a little bit and it looks better and better as it dries so it sort of seems like when you're doing it it's kind of a, a disaster at least that's how I feel every single time I sit down to color something I think oh this isn't turning out oh look at that it's not blending yuck and so I'm always kind of thinking that it's not that good and then after it's all done and I look at it I'm like oh well gosh that's not so bad <laughs> So it's just one of those things. Then what we're going to do is we're going to take this and we're going to be very careful and we're going to go up here next to where the water line is. 
So don't go too close to the waterline, just right on the edge. Turn your paper around as you need to. You don't have to keep the paper straight. And so we're just going to kind of outline the water's edge. Then we can go in and fill in. It's very hard to color on camera because you're really kind of nervous about it. And I can't get my head directly over the top of it, so it's sort of hard to see what I'm doing. But I think we're doing okay. And this is probably, putting this green on is the most time-consuming part because the blue goes really fast. I'll probably be down to just two watchers after all this. Oh, no. So I got a little green up here in the skyline. I'm going to show you guys a tip for when you go outside the lines. Take your color lifter, which is actually a color pusher through, and just dot that on over the top of where you went outside the lines. Then let that dry, and I'll show you how awesome that looks in a second. I think everybody should have at least the color lifter. It really makes a difference. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to take this and just extend it kind of over here to the right, just sort of off the edge. You don't need to fill it in super good, but you need to have it look, um, I don't know, you need to have it kind of go more to the right here. So we're just going in. And we're just filling it in. And it's going to have a rough edge to the right. But you know what? When it's all done, it's going to look good, I promise. There we go. All right. So now we're going to do the lake park next, giving this a little bit more time here to, to uh, dry. So the lake park super easy. We're going to take the dark, balmy blue first. We're going to take the fine end. And we are going to, again, just add color kind of where those lines are. So wherever you see a line, take the dark balmy blue. You're just going to color in where the lines are. There we go. Whoops, almost missed one. Right there. Done with the dark balmy blue. Now everything else that's left to color is the light balmy blue. So then you're going to go in and it looks really dark right now but it does lighten up as it dries and you just kind of go in and color that in pretty good, pretty heavily because you want this to look like a, a real lake here or pond or water hazard depending on how you're using this card. All right, there we go. Then, and I think this has dried through, then go ahead and fill in your sky. So we're just going to, and again, it doesn't have to be perfect. But I'm just holding the pen kind of at an angle. And we're just going through and doing the sky. Sorry, I know you guys are all making some really nice comments. I'm counting on that. I always appreciate that so much. But I can't really look at the comments and color at the same time. So that's what's going on here. All right. So we have this done. And right now it looks a little bit rough. But in a few minutes after it's had time to dry, it's going to look just like this one. And it's going to look fabulous. All right, so now let's go ahead and start putting these cards together. <laughs> Andy's saying she's staying till the end. I love it. Thank you, Andy. You are a true vote of confidence. All right, so now we're going to build the front image of our card. We are going to take basic gray, and I've got this cut at 4 and 1 eighth by 5 and 3 eighths. What an odd thing you're saying, because you're wondering why I did that. Let me find the original card. We want the tiniest, tiniest, skinniest little border. So that's why we have these kind of unusual numbers here. So 4 and 1 eighth by 5 and 3 eighths is our basic gray panel. And we're going to build on that panel. So to build on that panel, we're going to put down this beautiful uh, 
designer series paper and again that's called country club designer series paper and I have this cut at two and a half by five and three eighths and I'm just going to use some multi-purpose liquid glue and we're going to put it all the way around and then pick it up and just set it in here and just bring it flush to the right and flush to the left and then make sure it's flush to the bottom and that's done. We'll do the same exact thing to this one over here. Just a little skinny line of glue all the way around. And we'll set this on exactly the same thing. This is a pretty easy card once you have that coloring done. The next thing we're going to do is take our, our uh, gray granite grow grain ribbon I think it's grow grain what is it nope it's not it's gray granite textured weave ribbon is what it's called this will be the giveaway so when you make comments tell me where you're watching from um, you will be in the drawing that I will do on Thursday So here we go and then I'll give away that that ribbon I think I have to take my jacket off. I'm roasting. We've got two extra kitties in the house, so I had to shut the, my office door, and with all the lights for my video, I'm just roasting here. Oh my goodness. So my daughter's moving to California pretty soon, and so her kitties are at my house for a while. Not the whole while. She's going to take them with her, but as she's cleaning out her apartment and all of that, we've got the kitties. So they're really cute, but you can't tell them apart. They look exactly the same. So, so my assistant, Kim, calls them Pete and Repeat. <laughs> but their names really are Milton and Maine. All right. And they're big cats. They're big compared to our little kitty. Our little kitty looks like a... I mean, we always think he looks big till he's next to Carol's cats. And then we realize how little they are. What, how little he is. Okay. So all I'm doing is wrapping this ribbon around my card base here, and I kept it pretty much even with the top of that designer series paper, okay? Then the next thing we got to do is a little bit more stamping. So grab a scrap of Whisper White, and you're going to stamp with sympathy twice. So there's once, and here's another time. And it is, it is true, my daughter is, I also have the door closed because my daughter is sewing caps surgical caps she's a nurse and she's sewing up surgical caps because they don't have enough I mean can you believe it they are still having trouble with PPE so they have the mask but they don't have the protection on their heads so she's so sew sewing the head protection so she's very busy there we go and so she sews them for herself and she sews them for her other nurse friends she found a, and then of course Kim, my assistant, she donated all the supplies to Casey. So Casey has all the thread, all the fabric, everything she needs to make these masks, which is just fabulous. Oh, what did I do? I punched out with Timeless Label Punch. You're probably wondering. Then take another scrap of old, uh, take a scrap, another scrap. This one's old olive, and you're going to punch out two Timeless Label Punches because we're going to layer up this sentiment. There we go. To layer this sentiment, all I'm going to do is flip it over. We're going to add just a, one little strip of snail to the back. And then what we're going to do is we're going to put like about a 1 8 inch layer to this. Very skinny. Not even 1 8 Probably a little less than 1 8 See how little and skinny that is? It isn't so impressive just to look at it now but once you see how the whole card goes together you'll see why I want it to be really skinny you'll understand that in a second so we have them both layered up then the next thing we want to do is we want to frame oh look how pretty these are we're going to frame our little landscape scene so I have this cut to make a very very skinny border just on the top and the right sides so it's a little different way of layering so this is three and one sixteenth by three and three sixteenth 
I know, kind of silly, right? So I'm going to take this and I'm going to use some, some uh, glue. No, I'm not. Yes, I am. I'm going to use some glue. So then I can wiggle it a little bit into place. So I'll just put glue all the way around. But instead of centering it, I am actually going to put it flush to the left side and flush to the bottom. And I like the glue because I can just wiggle it the tiniest little bit to get it just perfect. And I'm going to flip this over so you can see. See that tiny, tiny little layer? That's all we're going for. I'm going to do the same thing for this one. Again, just the tiniest little bit of glue. And then we can wiggle it around and put it right where we want it. The glue is staying. So for those of you that are concerned about adhesives, the glue will stay. All right, so there we go. We have them both ready. Hold on here. I have a little post-it on the back and I wanna take this off. There we go. All right, so there, there we have our, our layered up panels. Now it's just a matter of assembling this card. So let's bring these pieces in. Oh, you know what I'm going to do before I even do that? I'm going to do the envelope because I, you saw that I was doing the envelopes. I'm just going to quickly show you how to do the envelope using the silicone mat, which I think is pretty essential. Because the thing that I find that is a problem with envelopes, when people are doing the flaps back here, the problem is they don't put the snail close enough to the edges and then you have these little sections that start coming away from uh, your back. So if you ever put designer series paper on an envelope, you know it really gets, it really, you know, going through all those machines, you need to make sure that is really on there really, really well. So the way I do it is I take my snail and I, I Put the envelope so here's the flap I flip it down and I, I put the snail on so that it is absolutely flush with the edge of that envelope see it's flush all the way down and that's why I use the silicone mat so then we're going to do the same thing over here just flush right to the edge flush to the edge again and flush to the edge again and actually then you don't use quite as much snail because then through here you don't need that much. It's really all about getting that snail on the very, very outer edges. And then you take your two and a quarter by six inch panel here of coordinating designer series paper. And you can just set this so that it is totally flush with the top of your envelope, press it down, then you take your scissors and you are just going to trim. So you guys know how to do this. So I'm not gonna bother doing that because I have one actually done. So you just trim from the back side so that you have your, your cutout envelope flap. All right, so let's go ahead now and finish up this card. So here we go. We are gonna work just with the panel for the moment. And what I'm going to do is get a lot of dimensionals going. So let me grab my dimensionals. Oh, and now I have some time to look at comments and whatnot. Whoops, I can't do it this way. It just occurred to me I can't do it this way. Hold on. Stop the horses here. Stop the train, or whatever people say. All right, I will explain why we can't do these labels for now, but we can put this on. So I'm going to put dimensionals over here. So we're just gonna put dimensionals at the top and at the bottom. And then we're gonna do one about, oh, not quite right to the middle because we're gonna have that ribbon running through the middle. Then take off the peelies. Oh, you guys are so kind. Thank you for loving the card. I actually designed this a couple weeks ago and way before I actually even knew that the flourishing phrases was retiring I just knew I loved I just knew I needed a couple of male sympathy cards and I wanted to do something a little different 
So now what you're going to do is you're going to set this in so that everything is even over here. And you want to make it pretty narrow. So this looks pretty good, looks pretty lined up. And we're going to do the exact same thing on this one. So again, I'm going to grab my dimensionals. Some of you who are wondering what the heck, I um, recently, you guys know I always do my nails, and I wasn't doing my nails for a while, well obviously because of COVID, because I go and have them done, but I was kind of keeping them as a badge of honor, you know, half growed out. Well then yesterday I went to Target, and I hadn't been to Target since this crisis all started, I went there one time to really stock up and then haven't been there since. Well, I went yesterday and they they had my color, my color of nail polish that I love. So I bought it and just put a coat right over the top of what I, of the mess I had going on. And uh, that's it. And no, my husband and I are doing fine. I'm not wearing my rings today because I was golfing yesterday. Thank goodness in Minnesota they've lifted the restrictions on golf. And um, and so I just don't have my rings on because I don't golf with my rings. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to take a couple of, you know, and I could have left that one on there. I just wasn't sure at the time. But what you want to do is you only want to put one dimensional on your label because you only you were going to put this flush with this panel. Then take your snail. And just put a little along the top because that's going to grab up here. So now what we do is we look how much room we have over here. And we're going to try and get about that same amount of room on the left side. And about the same amount from the bottom as we have up at the top. And there it is. So we'll do the same thing over here. There we go. And then we're going to grab our, our panels. We're going to flip these over and we're going to put them on with glue. The reason we can use glue again is because our card base is thick whisper white and the thick whisper white holds up great to the glue. If this was our regular whisper white, I use that mostly for stamping and for putting panels on my cards, but I don't necessarily like to glue it. And I don't like to use it as a card base. If I'm doing a a card base, I like it to be the thick whisper white. So then you set this in here with the glue. The glue gives you just that tiny bit of wiggle room so you can make sure it looks absolutely perfect with that really little skinny border all the way around. And doesn't that look great? So there's card one that will be in the giveaway. Here is card two going into the giveaway. And I just think these turned out so nice. Got that beautiful little border all the way around. So incredibly pretty. And then you open it up and there it is. So that is our video for today. So here are the three cards I made. And then of course we did the, the matching envelopes. And I truly thank all of you for, for being a part of this today. If you'd like to place product orders with me, I will put the information up in our Facebook Live here. I'll just edit that in a few minutes. Um, otherwise, you can always find links to my online store and the current host code by going to www.stampingtoshare.com. Have a wonderful day, you guys. I truly appreciate you. And stay well. Bye-bye.